I don't, I don't get, <sighs> sorry, just a second. Uh, <laughs> I want to use the phrase, I don't get paid enough for this. Uh, but... you, can, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> just say whatever you're feeling. Here. Hey, I'm Chris. I'm with TC Helicon and we are here in Denmark. And today I have the pleasure of sitting and chatting with Craig McClure, who is the creator of the GoXLR utility app, which many people know and love. And we're also going to get into some of your history of gaming and of streaming, and then the development process, of course, and uh, everything from Canadian office closure to GoXLR is dead, and all the good stuff. And we're very excited to have you. Craig, welcome. Thanks for being here. I think I speak for most of the team when I say it's really cool to finally get to meet you in person. Absolutely. It's good to be here as well. So we'll start from kind of the beginning. How did you get into streaming? Uh, it's just more of a thing I enjoy doing. I didn't so much get into it as just kind of play around with it. Mm -hmm. um, I started very much, you know, making small YouTube videos and uh, kind of back in the day, the voice meter and uh, oh, yeah. I was doing fraps, just see recordings of games. And I just kind of went from there over time, just kind of growing it, getting better and uh, playing around with it some more. Did you have certain games that you were into as a kid? It's really, really a mixed bag. It kind of depends mm -hmm. on where the mood takes me at the time. Sometimes I'll play first person shooters, other times games like Rocket League, going back further, it's just uh, Sonic the Hedgehog was one of my childhood games. Okay, nice. Um, <laughs> did you ever play on any, um, uh, was it mostly on PC or did you play on console I'm as well? mostly a PC gamer. Okay, uh, so no retro gaming for you? Not really, well, emulated. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. One of the questions that I have to ask is where did the nickname or the the um, online name Frosty Cool Slug come from? That's an interesting story. Um, while I was in secondary school, I got the nickname Slug from some friends just because I was often slow and late to class. Okay. Uh, bad influence. Um, and I think it was playing either Midtown Madness or Monster Truck Madness online. Mm -hmm. um, the nickname Slug was already taken, obviously. Um, and Frosty Cool Slug was just one of the suggestions that was there. Really? So I selected it, and that would have been 20 plus years ago now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's still there and still in use. And now it's become this ubiquitous thing. It's yeah. also in your programming. And your... <laughs> yep. I was looking through some of the forums and some of your stuff you've done in the past, because you've done so much work, kind of like the GoXLR utility for so long and it's pretty cool to see that Frosty Cool Slug name. <laughs> More streaming specific, mm -hmm. when did you start to think about what went into your streaming setup? More than just, you know, a webcam and whatever. I mean, it was probably about four or so years ago, four or five. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of around the time that the GoXLR was initially released. Uh, okay. Before then I was using voice meter specifically for separating chat with friends and game audio for recording and streaming just so I could better balance things <laughs> where necessary. Um, and that was that was great. It worked well enough for me at the time uh, and kind of kept working. Um, and then the music started being added in and something mm. slightly more serious uh, was possibly getting needed from at that point where I'm manually mixing um, everything in software. Uh, and that's kind of when I ran into the Go XLR as, okay. as an option for that, which basically just gave me all that functionality on something I just go whoop with, uh, which was yeah. <laughs> substantially easier than alt-tabbing and uh, jumping around stuff. So, and obviously with the GoXLR, I meant an XL, uh, XLR mic is coming in and then yeah. uh, the headphones, nice headphones. And it's kind of round there where my setup grew a bit. Did you have a first microphone, a first set of gear that you remember? Or maybe you still have it today? <sighs> I think just some Razer wireless headphones, not particularly great quality, but they got the job done. Um, and what are you using today as a streaming setup? Oh, I've got an AT2020 microphone, um, nice. some Sennheiser cans, and cool. uh, a Logitech webcam, pretty much. Sweet. That's a solid setup. Yeah. I think you can go so far into the into the realm of gear, but <laughs> like you really only need the... Yep. 
I, I, I settled <laughs> early. <laughs> so. That's good. I'm curious about community wise with gaming. Did you start to meet people online, make friends when you were streaming? Uh, a lot of it came from sort of IRC back in the early days, mm. is where a lot of communities kind of grew from. Um, that's where a lot of people I play games with okay, uh, yeah. kind of come from. So it's the community of us from there. Um, obviously, we've moved on to things like Discord these days, but yeah. the origin stories are still kind of there back, let's say, a long time ago. Yeah. I feel like Discord is a really neat thing to come about, and it's cool to see how strong the gaming community has taken that and made it into the mainstream communication. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so next question is, I want to know a little more about your first thoughts on the GoXLR app and the GoXLR itself. Um, as I mentioned, the GoXLR solved a problem I had Yeah. Um, with just audio mixing in general when mm -hmm. streaming and video and play, just playing games in general. So I mean, getting out of the box for the first time, I mean, it was big. I think it was my very first thought when I took it out of the box. Okay, this I think a lot of large. people think that today as well. <laughs> no, I just looked at my desk and I'm like, where do I put this? It yeah. was very... Uh, yeah, we, we uh, still have that comment a lot. Yep. Yeah. I shuffled things around and just put it in. Um, and, you know, I was quite surprised just how nice it looked when it, when it was in place as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my that was the start of my journey, I guess, here. Uh, yeah. I'm using the app. Yep. Yeah. Did its job, um, it's easy enough to do, uh, and just get in, get set up, and then not have to worry about it. Um, allow me to just tweak everything as I need it and kind of keep everything, yeah, leveled properly. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an ad for going for that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying all the right things. Ah. Were there any things that came up where it didn't solve your issue or it didn't work like you wanted it to? I mean, there were definitely a couple of features I wanted when I started using the GoXLR. For example, mm -hmm. when my computer goes to sleep, a way to turn off the lights. Of course, uh, they right. can be very bright. And uh, the sample pre-buffer, the yes. recording stuff from a little way before you press the button just to kind of uh, catch it as it comes. Right. Because sometimes it's impossible to predict when someone's about to be funny, whereas it's easier yeah, to no, record totally. after the fact. Um so a couple of things there, but otherwise it was generally just a pretty good experience. Um, That's good. That sample pre-button has just made me think of the bleep feature and it might be helpful to have a... I mean, it, it's not possible, <laughs> but if you were to delay your stream, it's something we had talked about in the past is having a delayed stream and then going back on your bleep. Yep. Because it's kind of a strange feature when you have to bleep yourself. Yep. Um, but people love it, so apparently yeah. it gets used. I, I certainly swear a lot in my streams, but uh, <laughs> the bleep button's more for comedic effect uh, yeah. than actually me myself. Yeah. How often are you streaming right now? These days, not very much. Uh, I spend more time just doing development work and okay. uh, playing solo or, you know, with a couple of closer friends. Yeah. Um, I'll probably get back into it one day, but it's just finding, you know, the, the, the time and the space to feel comfortable doing that. Maybe a retirement gig. Yeah, possibly. Retirement streamer. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice segue into development. Mm -hmm. So let's, away from the GoXLR for a second, let's talk about when you first got into development. How did that start? Um, what were your experiences? When I was... Very, very young. Um, I had a ZX Spectrum. Um, and I loved it. I loved the idea of pressing buttons on a keyboard and something happening on a screen. Mm. Um, I'm probably about six years old at this point. Um, and it was just how things work and how it worked and how to make it work was just a very, something that captivated me at a very young age. That's kind of when I started learning programming and the concepts. Uh, I was probably a couple of years older by the time I actually really got into it but right. you know your first for loop like 10 print hello <laughs> yeah. go to 10 run uh, yeah. I think anyone from back then will be familiar with that um, and yeah and it just kind of grew from there um, until in my mid-teens I, I started playing around a bit with C++ um, late teens-ish 
Uh, I wrote, uh, well, I was one of the principal developers of an IRC server um, with a friend of mine. I didn't stick around with that for too long, but uh, it's still going very strong today. Very impressive. Um, and again, smaller things as time has gone on, mm -hmm. just oh, generally in the open source realm. Okay. Um, give me things there. So how do you feel about open source? That's an open-ended question, but <laughs> what are your thoughts? I'm an advocate for open source software. Yeah. Uh, it's... It is a thing, it, it drives community mm -hmm. just by its very existence and by its very nature. It's something that you can sit back and uh, you find something that you don't like mm. and then you fix it. You either fix it or you, you learn how to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, the potential for individuals to be involved, for community, for people to talk to each other yeah. uh, and bring out the strongest possible piece of software is immense in that area very cool how much learning would you say you do say today being as experienced as you are versus maybe sharing knowledge with others i'm i, I think i'm always learning there's yeah. always something to learn be it new developments in languages um new softwares or tools uh, which just simply help out and ways to do things mm -hmm. um I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's always learning, basically. Uh, everything just keeps moving. Technology is always moving. Uh, mm. you, you have to kind of stick with that movement. Otherwise, you can potentially get lost somewhere back where you can make functional code, but yeah. it's difficult for other people to be able to work with it. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are still some apps in things like Fortran, which is back there mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely are there any areas that you find interesting right now or you think are really going to take off so there's things that you're interested in learning specifically it, rust has been my big thing recently mm -hmm. uh, i did start learning rust for the utility project um and okay so at the beginning of the project specifically for yeah i did wow. not know any rust at all that's um, incredible so the project has been in that, and I've been seeing it in the background as well, just evolving as a technology that's being used for development yeah. um, in a lot of spaces. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of following along, learning, getting better um, as I kind of move. And the utility has been a great test bed for me to just kind of experiment with uh, things and, let's say, just learn. Yeah, that's a really cool experience for sure. I'm so impressed that you learned... <laughs> rust from the start of the utility app experience do you have other languages with similar scenarios where you've just learned it out of the box uh yeah i did it for c plus plus and java okay. um python not so much <laughs> it's probably only one gotcha. did uh, you go to school for programming i no. can't remember okay no. so you're like a self-taught yeah pretty much everything guy that's very cool Maybe we could talk a little about the utility app itself mm -hmm. and how you got into that. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, I got GoXL a few years ago and I enjoyed it, but I also do like using Linux mm -hmm. um, as a primary operating system. And it was one of those pieces of hardware which just had no support or minimal support. Yeah. Um, there was already a community kind of set up which was focused on doing what they can you know um some scripts and stuff to get it working as best as possible but it still required windows for initialization for um all of all the basic stuff and it just kind of uh, a, a video reminded me that linux existed um or it still existed mm -hmm. uh, and that the GoXLR does not work particularly well <laughs> on it um <laughs> which uh this is a youtube video this is a youtube video yeah uh, I think most people watching will already know which one it was. Yes. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of activity on the official Discord at the time about asking for Linux support. And yeah. um, that's kind of when I started investigating um, what options we had. I found the community that already existed and kind of joined yeah. in. Um, booted into Linux, started tracking some USB protocol messages. And uh, a few of us just hammering through what we can, trying to see if we can get some sense out of them yeah and um i mean dinnerbone did for the headers and everything else just kind of fell into place and that was basically the start of the utility 
And that was probably around 2019, 20... two and a half years ago. Okay, yeah, even more recent. 